Welcome back to another webinar. So this is part of our oil filtration series webinar, and this is uh, episode six. So without any ado, I will go straight into the presentation and I'll do the introductions and everything from there. Okay. So the title of today's session is Return Line Filtration. So this is one of an episode, sorry, an episode in a series. Thank you for joining us again. Thanks for those that have come back from the, and seen the previous episodes. We've got 11 in this series. This is number six. So at the moment, we're looking at the options available, where you can place filters in the system. Two weeks ago, we did the pressure filtration. This is now return line filtration. Okay, so this series is going to keep us busy until December. All right, so what is return line filtration? I'd better define it first. It's pretty straightforward. It is a filter that's placed in the return line. So what that means is after the oil has gone through the system, then the return oil back to the reservoir goes through a filter of whatever description. So the reason for that primarily is if you have a filter here that will protect the reservoir from any debris that's generated by the system or indeed by the pump. So the premise here is that if we can protect the reservoir from contaminants, then we will be protecting the system from contaminants. Now, because it's in the return line, it's, it's important that we understand how these things are sized up. If you have a lubrication system, well, your return line flow will pretty much be your pump flow. If you have a hydraulic motor in a hydraulic system, then your, your return line flow out of here will be the same as what goes into the motor, minus your leakage from the motor. But if you have a hydraulic cylinder in your application, then that's a little bit different because a hydraulic cylinder, uh, you have a, a differential volume between the annular side of the cylinder and the full bore side of the cylinder. So particularly if you have a large rod in your system, then you're going to get what's called flow amplification. So that means that you could have, say, for example, 50 litres going into your cylinder, 50 litres per minute, but you may have more coming out, quite a bit more. You, you could have gained an extra 20, 30 litres per minute. So you have to be aware of that. So ultimately, with return line filtration, you don't size it on the pump's flow rate you size it on the expected flow rate in the return line. you got to remember that's where you're putting your filter. Okay, so calculate your flow amplification first. Advantages and disadvantages of return line filtration. The principal advantage with return line filtration is that you still have pressure available. Even though it's still a return line, this enables you to have fine filtration. Glass fibre media gives you very good protection for your system, but you have the ability to push fluid through there because of the pressure in the system. So this enables you to have three micron filtration, five micron filtration, 10 micron filtration. These are typical kind of ratings. So you get fine filtration possible in these return lines. Another advantage is that because of the low pressure expected in the return line, that means we can have light materials. So aluminiums and plastics are very common. So light materials will mean a lower cost overall and a lower cost for your return line elements and a lower cost for your filter housing. So fine filtration at a lower cost means value for money. So the return line filters give you the best return on investment. Okay, it's pretty easy to remember. So that's one of the reasons why this is by far the most popular type of filter that's used in lubrication and hydraulic systems. It's uncommon that you don't see a return line filter. So I would argue then that if you are replacing return line filters and you're doing that commonly, then you're servicing a typical system. Okay. If you engineer systems that use return line filtration, you're engineering a typical system. So they are very, very common. There are some disadvantages. One, one that is important that you need to consider is that because you are in your return line, you could get a changing flow rate all the time. Now, this is a reading of an actual return line and the flow rate that's in it. So we're going, for example, from basically zero flow to 18 liters a minute, on, off, on, off, on, off. So your little elements doing that. Okay, 
Dynamic pulses will affect the ability of the filter to retain trapped contaminants. So for that reason alone, return filters may not be enough to ensure that your cleanliness target is met. You may have to use other forms of filtration as well, and that could be offline filtration. Uh, and we'll talk about that, of course, in a few weeks' time. So return line filters and pressure line filters will only work when there's flow occurring. Now, it's pretty obvious, but it becomes an important part of system design because depending on the system configuration, a machine may not achieve the required fluid cleanliness if it spends much time in a standby condition. So if you have a, a system, for example, that has a variable displacement pump, it will only give you flow when the system's moving its actuators then you're not going to keep your system clean. So return line filtration, again, may not be the best solution. It's very, very common, but sometimes it needs to be supplemented because of these disadvantages. Let's look at the construction of return line filters. So there's really three typical return line filter configurations that can be used. First is inline mounting, and that is where the filter itself could be mounted on a bracket, on a flange here, and there'll be a hose or pipe going in and a hose or pipe going out, and you service the filter in there. So this is inline mounting, and it's, it's, it's commonly used. Also very commonly used is tank top mounting. So this is where the filter itself is mounted on the tank top, and that, that's very, very common because uh, you know we have the sealed systems, we keep the fluid in there, we have a tank with a lid. It's a nice place to put a filter, very common. And um, servicing is very easy as well. You just open the top up and replace the element. The third type of return filtration element that is common is the good old spin-on filter. So the spin-on filter is um, pretty obvious how it works, similar to the filters on your car. You replace the element and the housing <laughs> at the same time. So um, they're very commonly used. They're not often the best type of filtration, but they are common. Okay, part five, filter bypass. We talked about this in the last presentation about pressure filtration. So we have the schematic diagram on the left-hand side here. We can see the bypass, and this is uh, drawn as the check valve with a spring. This is when you have a bypass fitted on a return line filter, it's sometimes in the filter head. So this is the bypass assembly here. This is the indicator on the top. So typically the oil will come in from our left-hand side and go down towards the outside of the element. It'll pass through the element and come up through the center hole, and that's your cleaner oil going out. Again, if we don't replace that element and we need to go into a bypass situation, if we have high viscosity or something like that, then you can see how the bypass is going to work. Simply pressure pushes against the spring and opens a path bypassing the filter element. So that's a typical construction. Also very typical in the HIDAC world, in the HIDAC series of elements, is that the bypass is part of the element. So this is very common in the pr principal return line filters that HIDAC use. So there's a little, a little point at which you can grab the element and lift it up there, or they have a handle. In the middle of that, you may not have noticed, that's our bypass, okay? And you'll find that if you press that with your finger, you pretty much won't be able to open it, okay? Because your finger it doesn't have enough force to be able to overcome that spring. But there's a bypass there, nevertheless. So uh, with the with the HIDAC series, um, if there is a bypass in the filter, it is a return line filter, okay? And that will typically have an R number on it, an R series element has the bypass in it. Filter indicators. We looked at this also with the pressure filtration. I just want to clarify something here. So we looked at two weeks ago, differential pressure across filters. Uh, we have flow going through a filter left to right, we're going to see a higher pressure here before the element than here after the element. The difference between those two pressures is our pressure differential. Now, with a pressure line filter, you're going to have a pressurized line A and a pressurized line B. So you're going to need to measure a differential. Well, you still measure a differential 
with return line filters, but it's applied a little bit differently because if our outlet flow is going to tank, then we're going to see that typically as atmospheric pressure. So we're going to have a higher pressure here than atmospheric pressure where B is. So the differential still A minus B. However, we only need to measure the pressure at one point typically if we know that there's atmospheric pressure after the filter. So all we have to do is measure the pressure here and we are measuring, measuring a pressure differential. Okay. So again, uh, delta P, pressure differential, is one of the most important fundamentals in filter selection and use. And we're going to be looking at that further down the track. So this is a typical tank top mounted return line filter. It's been cut away. You can see on the top here, this thread, that's where our indicator will sit. So we don't need to measure pressure differential. This is, you can see, on the outside of the element where the flow goes into and approaches the element. So we just measure the pressure in there. So that's, that's a typical indicator there uh, and, uh, and where it's fitted. Okay, so we're approaching the end here. We have a poll question here. Um, have you ever opened a filter housing to replace a filter and found that the element has been removed? I have on a number of occasions. And it's kind of surprising. You, you, you go, look, I've come out here because they need a hydraulic service. And uh, okay, they need a hydraulic service because, hell, they're not filtering because someone's taking the filter out. It doesn't make any sense. I'm just wondering if I'm the only one. So please go to the poll and address that. Okay, so finally, if you are finding these webinars interesting, please you know, engage with us with these webinars. You can see our pod, listen to our podcasts. They're on our website and Spotify and a few other places. Of course, engage with us. We'd love you to engage with us on social media as well. So always click the like and click the so subscribe. Okay, so there's five more to go. Um, we have uh, the next episode is on uh, boost filtration. So uh, we'll address that next time. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your time today. I hope, hopefully, it's been worthwhile. The next uh, webinar will be in about two weeks' time. Um, do enjoy the rest of your day. Everybody stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.